So I first met Kath at Michaelis. I was a student there and Catherine was a, was a teacher and she, she taught me the drawing module and other courses. And I really enjoyed that. And later after I was already back in France, um, Michaela contacted me for the Closer Than Ever project and asked me uh, to participate. And I needed to find, to find another artist to collaborate with. And I immediately thought of uh, Catherine. We began collaborating in uh, 2016 um, when the project began. But the deadline was very um, further away in time. Uh, we had like a year basically. And we kind of went on to do our stuff, uh, daily things, and uh, we were caught in, in just respective schedules, busy schedules. And then I contacted Catherine again, uh, telling her, look, we, do, we don't have much time, but it would be great if we could yeah, really do something. Last minute. And so it was kind of a last minute project, although, I mean, we had a month or six weeks, I think, to, to do it. So it was not that bad. I had this idea of, of maybe uh, working with the exquisite corpse technique and applying it to film and basically creating a film using that technique with our mobile phones. I think we started with a video and then it sort of organically grew um, from there. We were doing the video a little bit backwards and forwards and then it was a bit into the project that we started doing the dream journal, wasn't it? Uh, so we thought maybe um, it would be interesting to complicate the, the reading of the work uh, using text in the form of subtitles. Basically, we were working with film which were extracted from our daily lives, from our immediate physical surroundings. And we thought it would be interesting to balance the resulting images with a more kind of personal source material, something more... Um, from an internal dialogue. Exactly. And so we thought of the dream journal, just basically writing out dreams in a notebook and applying the same technique we had used with the videos, letting the other person know through a blog that we, that we created, uh, just an extract of the, of the dream we had, uh, we had written down. In the same way, a kind of conversation, another uh, parallel dialogue was taking place. And at the end, we, we managed to incorporate both, um, both mediums together in the work. I, don't know. I mean, for me, uh, Manu proposed this to me in a you know, video. I've done very basic video work, but it's not one of my primary mediums, um, which is more drawing and performance, digital work, but drawing rather than video editing. So for me, it was exciting to have that challenge. Um, but I think it was mostly that uh, the title towards telepathy, um, which was part of our conversation was how do we connect um, across this distance and also the um, premise of the project that was put to us of what it means to connect um, over this distance between Cape Town and Paris um, using technology. So I think for me, the mobile phone using something that we have as a kind of prosthetic extension of us in the day, using it a bit differently to communicate. So using, using it to communicate through fragments of um, video. I think it was one second or two, I can't two, remember. One or two. Um, one or two seconds of video um, was all we kind of exchanged. So we had to, um, from a very fleeting movement, you know, follow on and respond to that um, and then respond by taking video and sending it back. So I think that sort of data chance element intrigued me as well. I like that element and I like the fact that to me making the work was an interesting experience because the conversation didn't take place just through our WhatsApp conversations or exchanges. It was also just in the streets or while you know in the train going to work or I was thinking about the, the project all the time because we had to film our surroundings or just you know um, and that I thought was interesting to be permanently 
always make potentially making the work anytime anywhere mm. or something I, I enjoy so the other person becomes present mm. as well with you all, all the day which is mm. and at night sometimes when we're yes. dreaming as well when you woke up <laughs> yeah. and it flowed very easily i must say that's one thing that signs of a good collaboration i think is I mean, we had some areas where we disagreed, but it was mostly a really felt organic, like we were sort of mm. thinking together. I actually looked at the video after a, quite a long break. And initially for the first minute, I actually couldn't tell whose, wh whose edit was whose. It was like I was, they'd kind of fused in my, mem in my vet memory. It's that idea that we both were working from the same material, but we didn't work together to make one single edit. Um, without sharing again, we did our own um, edit of the video and then adding the text and then brought it together at the end. And for me, that was also another bit of the exquisite corpse, um, mm -hmm. that random element of seeing where the, the two edits would be dissonant or would converge or speak to each other. So mm -hmm. that for me was also an exciting sort of finish to the project. Catherine, because you did see the work installed, so maybe if you could talk a bit about how it felt and that kind of, you know, experiencing it in this public space now after creating it in such a private kind of intimate way. Well, I think the, for me it was exciting because it was quite chaotic. There was quite an amazing sort of cacophony of, because of, of the audiovisual visual element and it taking place in this sort of car park interesting spatial dynamic. The interesting thing was the conversation between all the works. So I think that was for me an interesting element of the physical exhibition. I think when you're so used to looking at it on a screen, quite a lot of the footage was was quite low light or dark. And so having the, you know, the difference between the screen and projection. And then I think the intimacy of the small scale for me, once it was blown up, didn't feel for me as, if, as effective. It is more like a book. It starts, it starts with a reference to, to writing, um, which is interesting. Oh, I think for me, the, one of the links is, is that what, what I was saying about the connection, um, I'm interested in how one can use technology or what often feels like something that's dematerialized or disembodied to actually bring more awareness to a, a sensory physical experience. An example of that would be the a performance I did in 2017 called Am I Ever Alone? Dancing to someone else's tune, inviting visitors to the gallery to, to go online and use the sort of the internet or the database of, of audio, select something that re, you know related to how they were feeling and then only I and the, the audience member could hear it. So using Bluetooth connection. Uh, and then I would respond, I responded blindfold to the audio track. So for me, I like using this performance as an example because it was about trying to create an intimate or an intimate conversation between two people via this sort of circuit of, of, of the database of the online um, as a kind of collective consciousness, so to speak. Um, so you've got a crowd of people in the gallery um, and no one can access your conversation except you, but they can access it visually, but only we can actually access the audio. So it's again playing with the different senses and kind of taking away certain senses in order to heighten other sort of awarenesses of the body or sensory. Um, so I think the project with Manu for me feels like an extension of that where um, there's, there's a, an awareness of a presence when there's an absence and it's quite a physical presence that you start to feel working with the, the dreams and the unconscious in relation to the, the perception of what we're seeing in the day. Mm. Well, Catherine, the, 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 I think in her work she's used to to work with uh, with processes and and, and constraints, uh, which is something that's uh, that's good, I think, to you know as a as a as a way to make work uh, sometimes to have constraints. 
it's not the way I usually work. So for me, this project was was, um, was something new, and I liked it for that. I don't know. I, I enjoyed having having the, these these this kind of set of rules that we had to follow a little bit. Um, in terms of themes, though, it was it was quite you know uh, interesting for me because it is ex in a way it is exactly what I'm interested in. I'm interested in how everyday images or sort of banal images can become surreal and take on a different meaning through re reworking them, altering them. Um, and in a way, it's kind of what we did um, by adding text from our dreams, etc. Kind of like having two realities collide and create something new. I'm interested in that. I'm interested in, in seeing how images can, their meaning can change through alteration and uh, and collage. So that's precisely what I was interested in, and I'm still interested in it uh, when I when I did this project. Uh, the difference was in the process, and I'm more used to having a general idea and then just exploring it, and maybe it will change along the way, and it doesn't matter. Um, whereas here we had like a set of of rules to follow, and and it. Um, it kind of uh, helped a lot uh, to just get work done <laughs> in a way. Well, I think, Manu, it's interesting for you to talk about, I mean, you do like to work with sort of all the forms of visual technology combined mm -hmm. with so that use of kind of installation with lights and projection. And mm -hmm. I mean, I think uh, technology is great as a, as a great tool to um, kind of create immersive um, spaces. So these spaces can be physical. I mean, I'm interested in creating immersive spaces, sometimes using basic technology. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, the, the, the high end stuff. Uh, for example, at Michaelis, I did an installation using a red acetate that I pasted on the, the windows of the, the space, and it, it, shift, it shifted the light inside, inside the room um, and created this weird atmosphere. Um, so sometimes very simple means can, can help to do that. Now, virtual space, as in like, let's say, a virtual exhibition happening online, um, it's not something I usually think about. I don't, when I make work, I don't, I don't think about how it's going to exist online or I don't make it to, to, for it to be on online uh, first. I first make it as a, as something that's material. Even if I'm working with video, I'm going to think about how I'm going to exhibit the video materially. Like how is it going to translate in the physical space? The visual technology has made you know, great progress in the recent years. And especially now with the crisis, I mean, galleries are using it to, as a means to, to show work. And I was quite surprised at how well presented it can look online. But to me, it doesn't come close to a, to a real space, a physical space. There's a relationship with, art, with artworks that also happens physically to me. I'm not criticizing it. I think it's great. Um, and I think I'd be interested to explore these in, in my work, these techniques and, and new, like, I don't know, VR technology, et cetera. It's just to me a, a different thing. It's a different space that has its, its own um, set of um, qualities and, and interesting uh, aspects. I haven't, I've only had a very limited opportunity to explore VR had a short session drawing in it. Um, I think what grabbed me was I really liked the play, the potential to work with immersion and scale and just an orientation and disorientation. But like when I was saying, it's like any artist tool, you have to have time with it to think through. Well, especially for me, I like to think through process of making. So I haven't really had the um, access to that that technology yet. Um, but I think if if I'm to feel it, I'm 
probably more interested, I always have been interested in things that are more access accessible devices that are more commonly used and getting playing with how can we think and use them differently. Um, so even when I was doing digital drawing for 10 years, I didn't get a tablet. I always used the mouse and the, I try like to use the sort of basic tools. I taught myself to draw with a mouse rather than a specialized tool for, for drawing on the computer. Um, so I think augment, augmented reality for me is more interesting where it's kind of a mixed reality um, where you've still got that physical in relation to the the virtual and how those two things come into conversation and with the current situation where we've been phys physically our physical movement is limited now and um, it'll be interesting to see how much the VR whether it does become a more accessible technology in terms of cost and availability um, beyond you know a gallery viewing tool uh, in in Cape Town in South Africa we under quite strict lockdown measures here um, so I just grabbed stuff at the studio and have brought what I could home and have a, a studio on the dining room table I quite quickly got a routine in place for me I think routines help me to cope with with uncertainty so there's certain studio practices of drawing like daily drawing practices I do um, and collaging and smaller work. So that I've kind of continued with. In the beginning, I was probably more productive. And as it's gone on, I think I've become more reflective. On the one hand, I've been hopeful and excited by how this lockdown has actually brought creativity to the fore for many people who were privileged enough to be at home and not working so much. Um, and I think it's nice to see that playfulness, but it's also left me feeling a bit overwhelmed and saturated with stuff. So I've gone through different phases. Manu and I, what came out of our sort of more recent conversation towards, towards this interview, I think is, is probably an example of that. Just how to kind of be quiet and slow down and go in within and connect rather than all this kind of external <laughs> connection. For me, it's been similar to, to Kath. I mean, lockdown measures are quite strict in France, maybe not as strict as South Africa, a bit different. Um, but I have a different um, situation at home. I mean, I have three kids uh, who are permanently at home at the moment. And, and so it's challenging in, in many ways. Um, daily life is very challenging. Uh, and we had to find ways to adapt to that. Um, that reality. But strangely, this kind of difficulty to get to work, to go to the studio, or, you know, the lack of time because of that has made me want to do work even more. So I, I'm now like always with my notebook, you know, sketching and writing ideas uh, more than I was before uh, the lockdown started. So I think it's interesting. It's kind of giving me the urge to to do it despite the situation and maybe finding other ways to to create to create i also have um we have the right to to go to work if we really have to and we can kind of you know find a way to so i can go to my studio i go there when i have a little bit of time and i'm very productive there it's interesting. It's just kind of this urgency, this limited time is actually positive for me. So um, can't complain. <laughs> um, and I completely agree with Kath on the fact that um, um, it's maybe a time to go inwards.
Yeah. <laughs> 